Welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year 2022, everyone. This is my first video in 2022. I'm glad to be back. I've been busy with life, work, projects, but have not forgotten about the Atari fans, the friends, the gurus, the geeks, everyone else. Anyway, um, today we're going to start off with a short video I've been playing around with the side cartridge. For those of you that don't know about the side cartridge, you can go watch my last video that I made last year uh, regarding the side two cartridge, which plugs into the cartridge port of your Atari 8-bit computer and gives you some new functionality with a CF or flash card. It allows you to create partitions, Atari partition type partitions, store files on that flash card, run games, programs, save files to it. But I found a new feature of the card, which it had all along, and I just hadn't really gotten to finding out about. And that is that that card supports FAT16 file system. Now, this is really important because with that support, you can now take that flash card and put it into a Windows or Macintosh computer and download programs from the internet. You can download Atari 8-bit games, programs, utilities, um, ATR images, XCX files, cartridge files, anything that you can find on the internet. And what I found is that if I have that FAT16 partition on the CF card, along with my other Atari partitions that I set up like my Drive 2, Drive 3, Drive 4, etc., I can actually transfer files from the PC Mac world to the Atari world. Now, this is something that's always been a pain in the butt, um, having to use SIO to PC or some other solution for that. But with this S sidecar solution, we can use the flashcard and we can actually do it pretty easily. I also wanted to take the time to thank those viewers that have continued to subscribe to the channel and watch the videos. Even though I've been busy, you know, like I said, doing my thing, I appreciate everybody that's subscribing and watching the videos, and I promise you I've got new content coming for you. As you saw in the opening um, intro to the video, I was sent an Atari 520ST from one of the viewers. It needs a little work, but it's been added to our arsenal of computer equipment here at the Atari Shack, and I'm going to be making several videos on how I restore that computer, fix it, um, do any mods that we're going to do to it. And we're going to learn about the Atari ST as well. So stay tuned for that. And I want to thank you to the viewer that sent that to me. He asked me to keep him anonymous for the time being at least. But um, I wanted to say thank you for that. And um, we're going to be doing a lot of cool videos this year. I'm going to be doing a lot of programming videos. We're going to be doing a lot of videos on new products that are coming out for the Atari, new websites, new um, news websites that come out with the Atari community in general and what's going on, which is ha happens to be a very vibrant computer. How about a beer? It happens to be a very vibrant community, believe it or not. There's a lot of people out there. I highly recommend you go check out the Atari podcast. I think the website is ataripodcast.net or ataripodcast.com. Those guys are doing a great job over there at putting out a monthly podcast about what's going on in the Atari community, um, new products, new games, lots of new games being released for the Atari. And um, we're also going to be doing some more videos on Fujinet because we all love our Fujinets. If you don't know what the Fujinet is, look in my video playlist and watch the videos on Fujinet. It allows you to connect your Atari computer to the internet through wireless networking. Yes. So anyway, without further ado, let's go right to the video. And let me show you how I did it. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we are at the 130XE. I've got my side two cartridge in hand and you wanna make sure that you're using a fresh flash card that doesn't have any partitions on it because what I found that if you've got partitions on it already, makes it a little bit more difficult to configure this with the Atari F-Disk partitioning tool that comes with SpartaDOS 4.49 or the, any later version of SpartaDOS. But anyway, so I've got my flash card here. It's a four gigabyte SanDisk Ultra 2. We're gonna put that in the side cart and we're going to maneuver that side cart into the Atari. Now, I also have 
Let me see if I can move the camera here. I've got a 1050 disk drive connected over here physically. And on this floppy disk, I've got what's called the SpartaDOS tool set, okay? The driver that you need in order to access FAT16 partitions does not come already stock on the side 2 cartridge when you get that. Um, you know, it has a lot of utilities on that cartridge, but it doesn't have that driver. So I usually put my 1050 drive um, on the computer that I'm using, and I've got Sparta Dust tools loaded on there as well. So let's go ahead and turn the, the XE on, and of course it will come to a Sparta Dust prompt. Since we've got the side 2 cartridge in, we've got Sparta Dust 4.49. Now, on my D1 drive, which is the floppy drive, I've got the FATFS.SYS, that's the actual SpartaDOS driver, the file system driver that allows SpartaDOS to access the um, FAT16 partitions. But before we do that, I want to load up FDisk and show you how we partition this flashcard. Because this flashcard doesn't have any partitions on it that the Atari is going to recognize. So we go into FDisk. By the way, this FDisk partition editor was written by Jonathan Holiday. He goes by the name Flash, Flash Jazz Cat. You can find him on Atari Age. Um, he provides this utility along with some other utilities um, along with the side two cartridge. So let's hit escape for the menu. And let's open. And the first thing you're prompted is the device you want to open. Well, that is our sand disk that's in there. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Now, FDisk knows that this is a raw card, doesn't have any partitions, so it's obviously telling me this card needs to be initialized. So we're going to hit OK. The master boot record will be destroyed. That's fine. Now, here's the cool part that I had never realized before. So we can right now, as you can see, we've got roughly a 4 gig flash drive, and we've got it in the master boot record partitioning format, or the master boot record is the, the, the style that you have to use if you're going to use this card with the Atari. And um, I know it says FAT32 there, um, but I believe that it's going to be FAT16. If anybody out there knows different, let me know. Maybe it is FAT32. We'll check that towards the end of the video. But so what I did was I decided, okay, my FAT partition doesn't need to be, need to be that large just to hold some Atari stuff that I'm transferring back and forth. So I made that 16 megabytes. And then as you tab down, it automatically configures the rest of the flashcard as APT. That's the Atari partition type. So then we're going to tab down and hit OK. And there's our layout. And we're going to hit Save. Write to disk. Are you sure? Boom. So now we're at the part in the tool, the FDisk tool, where we can start creating partitions. Now. This part of the partitioning tool that I'm looking at right now, this is where we create our Atari partitions. So for example, hit escape, get up to the menu, partition. Let's go ahead and edit this partition. And let's make the size of this partition, I don't know. Let's make it 1024, which is a gig. So it fills in the rest of the parameters for us. Let's go ahead and edit the drive letter that we want this to be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this drive 2. All right, so now we've got an Atari partition. I can come back up to the partition menu and I can set the name. You can see down here I can set the name to whatever games. All right, so now the way that we get to that FAT16 partition in this particular uh, tool, the FDisk, we go up here to partition. And then you see where it says external? Watch what happens when I click external. Operation may invalidate data in the higher partition. That, okay. See, it sees our FAT32 16 megabyte partition. I hit OK. So you see what it did? It went ahead and added it, added it to the partition table on the drive. So now it knows that there's an external partition outside of the Atari world that starts at sector 63 and the size is 32768. And there's our drive letter. So now on this external partition, I can go back up to partition. I can set the drive and I'm going to set this to drive letter three. What that means is eventually when I get that Atari uh, FATFS file system loaded, 
we're going to be able to access the 16 megabyte uh, DOS partition on drive three. All right. So now that we've got these two partitions set up, let's go back out to APT. Let's have it write that information to the disk. Okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. APT updated successfully. All right. So let's get out of here. Exit, are you sure? Yes. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to turn the computer off, take our flash card out of the cartridge, and then I'm gonna take this cartridge back to the PC and I'm gonna format that 16 meg uh, fat partition into a fat partition type. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and put our cartridge, our, our flash card back in the cartridge. We're going to insert the cartridge back into the Atari. All right, so let's boot the Atari. It's going to drop us into Sparta DOS. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this fat system, fat file system driver. Fat fs.sys and you can hear it loading and by the way can you see up top here how it shows the sand disk having partitions b and c that's what we want so let's switch over to drive three and in theory this should be our fat 16 partition so we hit directory now the first time you pull a directory up on the fat partition the the side two cartridge it does some caching or something in the background. I can see the light blinking on the card, but it takes a, a few seconds to actually pull that first directory listing up. Anytime after that, it's almost instantan instantaneously. So there we go. So 32,480 free sectors on our drive three. Now our drive two that we set up as the Atari partition, that needs to be formatted as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and format that with the Sparta DOS. So that's gonna be drive two. Since we're not actually formatting a floppy drive, some of these parameters here like skewed, the density, the number of tracks, they don't apply. So when you're formatting a virtual drive, like on the, on the side two cartridge, we're just gonna do a build directory structure. So let's go ahead and hit B. Directory is about to be cleared, are you sure? Yes. Caution, okay. Yes, we're sure. Directory written, okay. So now we go back out to the Atari. We type DIR, so now we've got Drive 2 is Atari-based. Drive 3 is DOS-based. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the flash card out of the cartridge. And I'm going to run over to the PC, and I'm going to copy a couple files to it so that I can show you what it looks like on the Atari. So hang on one more second. All right, we're back at the Atari. I got my flash card. Let's go ahead and insert that into the side two cartridge. Let's boot the computer. Get into some Sparta DOS. So let's go right, let's first of all, let's load our driver. And by the way, we can include the startup of this driver in our configuration system for Sparta DOS. Uh, we'll probably have another video on how to configure Sparta DOS X and the configuration files. But for now, I'm just gonna load it manually. So we're going to go over to drive three, which is our FAT16 partition. Let's do our initial directory call. Like I said before, this takes a few seconds for it to actually get that directory up the first time. And then after that, it's pretty quick. So, All right, so you can see here that I've copied a couple files, three files, ATR to disk, which is an actual ATR image itself. We've got alleycat, you know, .xex, and we've got adventure.xex. So as you can see, I've got three files now here on my Atari that are sitting on the flash card. Now, in order to get these over to an Atari partition, I could simply copy them. So, for example, I could copy Alley Cat to drive two, which is our Atari partition. All right, so here we are back at our Atari. Drive two, we've got Alley Cat. Let's go ahead and try and run that. And there we go. 
So we copied Alley Cat from the internet down to the flash drive on the FAT16 partition, and then we got it over to our Atari that way. Now, I'm pretty sure that we can just execute these programs right from that FAT16 partition, provided we have that driver loaded. So let's try that real quick. So let's switch over to drive three. We got that initial delay on that first directory listing. Waiting seems like eternity. All right, so let's go ahead and try and execute Alley Cat from the FAT16 partition. And there you go. Seems to work just fine. So you can keep your programs on the FAT16 partition or you can copy them over to another partition built by the Atari. But anyway, so I hope this video clarifies uh, that particular use on the side two cart and I'll do some more videos on the side two cart as I become more familiar with it And I learn more about it. So in the meantime Take care subscribe like tell your friends. I'll see you soon. Thanks again